click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome to the subject of Machine Design 1. Right now we are in the chapter number 3 where we are learning design procedures and design aspects of the machine or machine parts which undergo static loading. Right now we are solving a numerical on knuckle joint, knuckle joint design. Last lecture we had seen how to consider the material for knuckle joint and how to identify its material properties. In today's session we are going ahead with the design of eye end. We know that there are three basic parts of a knuckle joint. One is the eye end, then it's double fork end and then it's pin. So, so far we have finished with the design of pin. So, let us start with the design of eye end. Knuckle joint design. Part 2. Design of eye end. Students, we have already taken down the formulae which are very important in case of the knuckle joint design. So, of which we are going to concentrate on the formulae which take care of the knuckle joint eye section. So, basically, we are going to design this particular part. So far, what we have is rod diameter which is common for both the ends, the eye end as well as the forked end. So, we had found out the rod diameter is equal to 30 mm. With respect to this only we are going to proceed. So, let us start with the first part. Now, we know that the eye end has two aspects of failure. One of them is a tensile failure because the eye end is going to be pulled across, right? So, there is actual load acting on the rod in terms of the rod which is connected to the eye end. And hence, there are chances that it will fail under tension. And that's why we need to design it for tension. Tensile load we are going to consider. The formula we know that the diameter of knuckle end has to be somewhat equal to 2 times the diameter of rod, which we already have seen in the formula section. And therefore, D1 is equal to twice of 30. That makes it 60 millimeter. Now, the projected area must be the larger diameter minus smaller diameter into the length. And that's why the formula is equal to axial load is equal to D1 minus DP, where DP is the pin diameter, the pin which is going to be inserted through this particular hole. So, the projected area actually becomes this kind of thing, where this is D1 and this particular thing becomes dp into the length of the i section so that's why it is into length into tensile stress sigma t we know that this is the allowable value and therefore the p which has been given 33 kilo newton in our case the maximum p of course is equal to now guys, this is a standard relation. Now based on that relation, we get some value. We have to see that whether that value is safe or not. And that's why D1 in my case will be unknown for some time. DP, I already know the value is 30 again. Into length we have found out is 13. Into the sigma t allowable value of tensile stress in our case is 65 Newton per mm square. If I solve this, the only unknown that I have is D1. The value I'll get somewhere equal to 71.03 millimeter. Now we know that we have considered the value using the standard relation and that is 60 mm. However, the value which is obtained is greater than that. That means calculation wise the value should be larger than the standard relation value. And hence, since D1 is greater than 60 mm which we had estimated through the standard relation therefore we will go for a preferred series value or preferred number value and that's why the diameter d1 of i in the outermost diameter becomes let us increase this value somewhat to 75 millimeter and hence this is our first design parameter as far as i end is concerned 
Now, like I said, guys, there are two ways this particular iron will fail. First, we have said is uh, tensile loading, and second is shear failure. And that's why we have to consider the shear factor also. And hence, shear failure. Now, in case of shear failure, we have to check whether it is sustaining the maximum shear stress or not. And that's why the formula again becomes the axial load which is equal to twice we are considering twice because it is going to fail under double shear twice the diameter of the i end minus diameter of the pin divided by 2 this is the average area which we are going to concern and then it is the length of that particular section which is l into tau so here we have got the value of p we have got the value of d1 dp l we have the safe value of tau let us see using all these parameters the value of tau that we are going to get which is shear stress is safe or not within the range or not and therefore when we substitute the value 33 kilo newton twice the diameter which we have found out right now is 75 minus diameter of pin which is 30 divided by 2 into the length we already know is 13 into the tau which is going to be induced. If I solve this, the only parameter unknown is tau. The value of tau I get is 59.03 Newton per millimeter square. Somehow the value that we already have, the allowable value that we already have is different than that. The value we had found out was 30 Newton per millimeter square. This was the allowable value of tau. And hence, the value of tau which is right now existing is greater than the tau allowable. So that means the pin end or the I end that we have right now is facing the tau which is different than the allowable value. So in this case, the end or the I end is going to fail for sure under shear. And that's why we need to change the diameter value. The only diameter value that we have as of now in case of I end is D1 is equal to the D1 value we have found out is 75 millimeter. But this is failing under shear. So friends, the diameter that we have got using the design procedure 75 mm is not safe for shear failure and hence we have to increase the value. Now there are multiple trials that you can go through because it's a trial and error method because it's a manual method that we are doing. So you have to increase it, right? So we can consider the 100 mm diameter and thereafter. So making a couple of trials in the in the margin of say 20 or 25, we will get the exact answer. So I'm uh, avoiding that part right now to save our time. You can go for diameter is equal to 100 mm, then diameter is equal to 125 mm and then you can proceed with the same calculation part the one which we have done over here after this the possible values are maybe because it is not safe and hence it may be 100 mm or say 125 mm and so on so it's a trial and error method which i'll consider over here to get the value of tau now we know that the value of tau is actually inversely proportional with this particular thing so at this thing goes on increasing the tau value is going to lower down right and that's why we need to increase this particular parameter so i have already performed the calculation from my side the diameter that i have got the safe diameter i have got d1 is somewhere equal to 116.6 mm safe under shear that means all the values of diameter which are smaller than this will not be safe under shear and all the values which are greater than this will be safe under shear and that's why let's go for a preferred series or preferred number d1 will be equal to 120 millimeter and that means even the value of d1 which is equal to 100 mm is not safe for this particular calculation you can perform the calculation in the same manner which we have done and by trial and error method you will get this answer and hence this is my finding about the i end so i end diameter is the only important thing which we are concerned with so that we are done with it this was from my side about the design of i end in our next lecture we will be looking at design of 
double i n that is also called fog tent if you like this video please subscribe to ekira.com thank you